uh, in Isaiah, the prophet was speaking. And it tells us in Hebrews that, uh, that, uh, that God had spoken to our fathers in the past by the prophets. And of course, now he speaks to us through Jesus Christ. But this particular set of scriptures actually declares the coming of Christ. And here in the book of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 5, For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be, but this shall be with burning in a fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And this is very personal, this is very intimate, this is the declaration of the coming of Christ, and we're going to be looking here in just a moment in Isaiah chapter 40, but I want you to see that unto us, or you could say unto me, a child is born, unto me a son is given. We know this son, his name is Emmanuel, which means God with us. God in the flesh, manifested. There's a scripture in uh, 1 Timothy says that without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. For God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up in the glory. Now, I just want to point out to you, it says, God was manifested. Say manifested. Uh, the word manifested means to be revealed, to be expressed, to be seen. God himself manifested in the flesh. Now, there's a lot of mysteries we don't really understand. And we're not going to understand it to the day we leave this world. But it says, seen of angels. God manifested in the flesh scene of angels. Um, I, would, I would dare say you, to you that into the coming of Christ, the angelic world had never really seen God. Uh, matter of fact, no man had even seen the Father except the Son. No man had seen the Father but the Son. To see with the physical eyes, to experience with the flesh, the other day on Monday, I, I was, I was uh, laying in bed Monday night, and I was just meditating on the Word. I have a book back there called My Daily Meditations, and it says scriptures I've memorized years ago, and I just meditate on them. I'm laying in bed, and I'm meditating on the Word. So I, I went to sleep meditating on the Word. And you know, in the book of Joel, and also in the book of Acts, on the day of Pentecost, uh, he talked about the book of Joel, and he, and, and he said, this is that which the prophet prophesied. He said, for I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And he pours out his spirit upon the flesh. Now, time won't permit us, but really the flesh cannot perceive, cannot see, and cannot receive unless the spirit quickens it. The spirit makes all things known. Here, here's the scripture. I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man those things which God has prepared for them that love him. Now listen, it says, I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man those things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, even the deep things of God. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, go ahead, Danny, turn the heat on back there, will you? The LP furnace. Just click it on back there, please, and, and with the thermostat. Do you know how to do that? Okay, because I can see some of you are kind of shivering. <laughs> but God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. And the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So it, the Spirit has got to reveal to us the reality of God. Now, now, as we look at this, though, then it says in Romans, though, that all men are without excuse because God's reality has been revealed to all flesh. 
Now, how can, how can this be? For in other words, God says, you're without excuse. The evidence of who I am and even my divine nature is revealed. How? In the physical world that surrounds us. In the touch, taste, see, smell, and hearing world, it is revealed who I am. And yet it says, I have not seen or ear heard, not to enter the heart of man, what God has prepared for them that love him. That only the Spirit of God, and Jesus said, it's the Spirit that quickeneth, my flesh profiteth nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit in their life. So here I am Monday night, I'm meditating on the Word. And, and, and this is really where the church is going to have to come back to. The church is going to have to come back to the reality that the entrance into the realm of the divine manifestations of God is only through the word of God being quickened to you by the Spirit. Now, I'm going to say that to you again, because it is a spiritual reality, a spiritual law, that to enter into that realm... There is a realm, there is a place, there is a dimension where all things are possible. All things, say all things, all things. Are, possible are possible to you, to me. See, it's all, it's, there's a place, you mean little old me? Yes, little you. There is a place in the spirit where all things are possible possible to you. Jesus said, the works that I, I do, shall you do also in greater works than they shall you do. Why? Because I'm going on to my Father. I'm going back where I came. Right. He said, but there is a place where all things are possible for you. Now, wh where, how do you get into that realm? Okay, it's the realm of faith. Faith is the substance. Faith is a realm. Now, you, you and I, and if you ever do a study of the human eye, it, it's just mind-boggling. I mean, uh, the, the, the cells in the human eyes, the spectrums of color it can perceive, uh, what the eye can do. It, it's just incredible. It, it really is. It's really incredible. So we use physical eyes, okay? But we, we know that, for instance, uh, bats, this is where we got radar, they use sound waves. They bounce bats, basically, in the natural, don't have, they see, but not the way we see. They have sound waves. And they bounce off, they send them, and that's how uh, our military created uh, the radar, is, is, is by, by, what, by studying bats. It's amazing how many things the human race has come up with by looking at God's creation, which we know that they're even way more sophisticated than we are, but that's how we came up with radar, and we still use it to this day. Also, uh, our submarines or our ships use sonar, and you know where sonar comes from? It comes from dolphins. And, and they'll emit a sound, they'll go out, and they'll come back. And, and they see, they literally can see by sonar, by frequencies under the water. Well, listen, there is a place called faith. And when you walk by faith, and it says, the just shall live by what? Faith. By faith. Well, wait. Don't we live by our feelings? Don't we live by our emotions? Don't, no, no, we're not supposed to. Those of the world do. They live just by their natural intellect. But we live by faith. We walk by faith. What do we do? We speak the language of faith. Jesus, that's what he came to do. He came, he says, but having eyes, they see not. Having ears, they hear not. They're, they're, they're not, you, you enter into that realm by faith. So I'm going to get back to my story. So Monday night I'm meditating on the word, just laying in bed, I'm meditating on the word. And then I fell asleep and I entered into this incredible dream. Now remember he said, in the last day I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your young men will have visions and your old men will dream dreams so I have a lot more dreams I used to have visions but I guess I must be getting into 
being older. I have incredible dreams. Now, I never, never try to have a dream. I don't try to have a dream. Of course, I've always said I've had dreams. I have visions. How many know you get what you say? And I say I have dreams from God. I have visitations from heaven. God speaks to me. I tell people that all the time. It's just, I've always said that since I've been saved. God speaks to me. Because I, I, God speaks to me, first of all, and foremost, by his word. His word speaks to me. It's fresh, it's alive, it's like uh, uh, bread. How many know when, 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 when bread is in the oven and it comes out fresh, you can smell it? I mean, the word is fresh to me. I mean, after 40-some years of preaching a word, it's still as alive to me today, if not more so than when I began. So my wife, she's, she's uh, laying in bed this morning. I had gotten up, got over here, got the fire going, so forth and so on, and went back and... My wife reads the scripture out loud. This morning, she's laying in bed. Reads this. I said, whoa. I said, read that again. She read it again. I don't know if I had her read it three times or not. It was good. I said, no, I've heard it before, but how many of you ever had a slap of real thick butter on a piece of hot pipe and homemade bread? Just, just the other day we came in, and he said, last Sunday you made some homemade bread. <laughs> I, I hate to tell you this, during, I, I snuck back there and got some before church even started. I, I had to get myself some of that hot bread. Well, listen, it's the same thing with the Word of God. It's got to be alive. But how do, you, how, do you, how do you walk the Word? You do it by faith. Right? You do it by faith. This is all by faith. And, and, and the enemy is going to try to keep us out of that realm, out of that dimension. And we know there's 28 ways that faith comes. But the major way that faith comes is faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I, I'm in the word and the word is going to bring me into that place that I can see by the spirit what's going on. So... As I'm in the Word, the Word takes me to a place where I can see what God is doing. You can't see it outside of the Word of God. You've got to go through the Word of God. The Word of God is the door. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Word, God's given us the written Word. Listen, you, 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 see, you need to see this. People say to me, God never speaks to me. I was preaching in Suriname some years ago, back in about 2011, and I'd been trying to minister to this, this older guy, and uh, he was struggling some. Um, he was living by his feelings, his emotions. He was living by his circumstances, which most people do. But if you're a believer, you're, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He will direct thy paths. You understand, as a believer, don't get confused if people can't see it the way you see it. Because as a believer, we don't see it the way the world sees it. Now, because I was of the world at one time, I know how the world sees it. We experienced it, right? We baiting from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We, we know what the world is experiencing. We know what the world is going through. We know what the world is thinking. We, I, I do. Even though I've been born. But you get born again and sometimes you kind of forget where you came from. And so we're shocked. You should never be shocked by what people do. Because the manifestations of the flesh are these. And it gives us a list of uh, 18 things. Adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, uh, murder, and such like. Here's the manifestations. Say manifestations. Now, I'm going to stick with this for a moment because the manifestations, manifestations are expressions or the visible results of the flesh. If you walk in the flesh, you shall die. 
But if you walk in the spirit, now the, the visible, say visible, because it is visible. How many you know adultery is visible? Huh? Lying, stealing, cheating, murder, rape, that's violence, hate, bitterness. You say, well, bitterness ain't visible. Oh, yes, it is. It, it, it's visible. It will be, well, the fruits of the spirit are the manifestations of the divine character of God. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, self-control, and against such there is no law. So the manifestations of God, his nature, is in the fruit. The manifestations of the enemy in the flesh have been revealed to us. So manifestations, this, this whole world is a manifestation, the natural physical world, nature itself, uh, the stars above us, the sun shining, the snow coming down, the, the, the green grass and the blossoming flowers, the fish in the ocean and the birds uh, flying in the heavens and the, and, and, and the animal life. It's all a visible manifestation of God, of who God is. That's why all men are without excuse. God has manifested himself. It is quite obvious, unless you've hardened your heart, that this did not come out of some kind of big random explosion, and it started by something crawling up out of the mucky mire. I mean, it's so obvious to me, but having eyes, they can't see it. Having ears, they can't hear. In other words, they're blind. You know, that's why the Bible says, the blind lead the blind. When Adam and his wife ate the forbidden fruit of the tree that God told them not to, it says, and they saw that they were naked. Now, really what happened there, there was a, they, they moved from the realm of seeing things in, in the spirit they, they, they lost the visible realm of faith. And they moved into the realm of the flesh where they could no longer see God, even though God was manifested right there. God was there. When they heard the voice of God, instead of hearing the voice of God, their heart was filled with fear, and they ran from the presence of God. They hid themselves from the presence of God. So... Don't, let, don't be surprised that when God begins to reveal himself by his spirit, the light of heaven begins to shine, people will begin to run. They want to run into the darkness. The light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So God manifested his glory. So let's go over there just for a moment to Isaiah chapter 40. And I didn't forget my story yet about what happened. I'm going to get to it. The other night when I went to bed, on Monday night sleeping. Now, Isaiah 40, and actually the whole chapter is just, is just amazing. Because in verse 3, it begins to talk about the voice crying in the wilderness. How many know who that voice was? John the Baptist, right? One crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Okay? And verse 5, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Listen to this. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. For in words, uh, heaven shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. God said, I'm going to reveal my glory to all human flesh. No, my glory. Glory means God's manifested expression in all of its wonder and amazement. Wow. Glory means God's manifested expression in all of its wonder and amazement. So we, 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 we're on a journey here this morning. You may not know it yet. It may not seem like we're getting far, but very far, but we're going to get somewhere this morning because God wants to open to you. Listen to this now. God wants to open to his people his glory. God wants us 
to experience His glory. What? The amazing, wonderful expression of the manifested presence of God. Let's see. How many of you think you have ever felt the presence of God? Let me see your hands. You have felt the presence of God. You felt it. It literally began to become manifested to you. Now, Jesus made an amazing statement, and, and I don't want to quote it wrong, so let me, let me read what it says here. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. Listen to this. And I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Let me read that again. He that hath my commandments. Now when Christ rose from the dead, he told his disciples, go and teach all men everywhere to observe all things I have commanded you. Why? Well, I thought we're no longer under the commandments. Oh, there's a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another even as I have loved you. God commended his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God manifested his love for us. People in the body of Christ, born-again believers, are struggling with whether or not God loves them. You should never question whether or not God loves you. Because he manifested his love for us, and that while we were yet sinners, he died for you. How many of you can see that? How many of you can see that God died for you? God died for you. Keep your hands up. I want, now look around. I want you to notice something. God hath revealed himself to you. If God had not revealed himself to you, you would not know this. Because the majority of the human race doesn't know this. They don't, they don't know who Christ is. And how come you know who Christ is? Because the spirit of wisdom and revelation is operating in you. This, this is the treasure that God's given us, not treasures in earthen vessels, but the treasure is is the spirit of revelation. It's called the, the, the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of revelation. I, I'm saying again, the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of revelation. Now, uh, let, let me ask you, how many of you know you have an IQ? Let me see your hands. You have an IQ. All of us have an IQ. How many know that some people's IQs are way more than other people's IQs? For notice, there's different levels. A brand new born baby, I don't know what their IQ level is. Probably not very high. But some people have IQs that are just amazing. I will tell you this, that as a born again believer, you, you've got to have the spirit of wisdom and revelation operating in you. Otherwise, you would not have seen that Jesus was God in human flesh. You have wisdom. You have understanding. You have spiritual insight. You, you may not comprehend this, but it's almost like a, a bat that has radar. We can't see what a bat sees. Like a dolphin that has sonar. We can't see what the dolphin sees. The world can't see what we see. So when you tell a doctor who doesn't know Christ, oh, I'm healed. They go, what? 
They go, oh, here goes one of these dingbats again. Let's just go ahead and pacify him and agree with him. And, you know, and just, you know, and they walk out of the hospital room where your loved one's laying on the bed and you're speaking life and you're declaring healing. And they go out and go, we got some religious nuts in there. Just try to pacify them. See, that's why I don't tell the world a lot because I know that I know that I know. Usually if I go in a hospital room and a believer's got someone laying in bed there and they got a real bad report, I wait for the doctor to go out. Because I'm basically not going to cast my pearl before the swine unless the Lord tells me to. Now, swine, that's not, we're not being negative because the Jews seen themselves as sheep and the heathen as, as, as dogs or also as swine. Because pigs are symbolic of unclean. They're, they're living in the flesh, in the mud, in the muck, in the mire. Now, the amazing thing is, God, I was telling a guy the other day, I was uh, minister, well, trying to minister to this uh, uh, African-American guy up on the hill in, in my house, and uh, he was going on about, you know, he, he believed in the old, in the old covenant, the old covenant, you know, and because I was talking about the mercy of God, and he and I said I got to give mercy to get mercy, and he he didn't he didn't like the mercy message. He didn't like forgiveness, and he didn't know he needed it. But but I I I told him I said man I said would you want to go back and right now at this moment if we could snap our hands and go back and end up being like an Amish man. With no electricity, with with no uh, uh, no no uh, automobiles, with no cell phones, no. And he didn't really want to answer me. I said, "Well, listen." I said, "That's like me going back into the old covenant." I'm not going back in the old covenant, honey. I said, in the old covenant, the reason why God brought judgment the way He did is because there could be no conversion of the heart. They couldn't be born again until Jesus came, became a man paid for my sins, died on the cross, and rose again. But now that Christ has come, he has come into my heart, and I have entered into a new world. Oh, it is a new world. I'm telling you, February 18th, 1975, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I entered into a new world that I never knew existed. At that time, I didn't know it was a world that you can only enter in by faith. And how is that? But through the word, I entered in through the word. He said, all glory will, all flesh will see my glory. And then jump down and see it's talking. We know exactly who he's talking about. Because it tells us very clearly in, in verse 5, he says, And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord shall have spoken it. Now, they saw, but they didn't see. Having eyes to see, they see and see not. Having ears to hear, they hear and hear not. Well, it's, it's, it's as obvious as the nose on our face, but they couldn't see it. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But listen, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become... The sons of God. Then he tells us, even as many as believe on his name. Yeah. Wow, there's, you believe on the name of Jesus. You believe there's redemption in that name. There's healing in that name. There's deliverance in that name. There's power in that name. There's life in that name. There's joy in that name. There's hope in that name. There's, there's, there's victory in that name. There's authority in that name. All we do, we do in his name. So he gives to those who receive him, I receive you, Lord, power to become to the degree that you believe. Woo. So the glory will be manifested. It's not that we're seeking the glory. Jesus said, Father, the glory that you've given me, that I've given in them, that they might be one even as we are one, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. The problem is, the, because we're not moving in the glory, the manifested expression of God, the world isn't believing. 
See, the glory operating in us, that's the Spirit of God in me. That's the glory of the Father. Christ was the glory of God manifested in the flesh. That glory is in me. Christ is in me, the hope of glory whom we preach. Did you get that? The glory of God is in me, and it's His Son in me. Whew. His Son is in me. The glory of God is like a pearl in an oyster. You don't know it till you crack it open. When you crack the oyster open, that oyster is basically dead. They, they don't open up an oyster, pull out the pearl, and the oyster's alive. No, to see the glory of an oyster, why do you think that the 12 gates of heaven are made of pure pearls? How'd you like to see that oyster? Whoa, that's one big mountain of an oyster. That'd be a whole bunch of heat eating, wouldn't it? <laughs> but yeah, when you rip that oyster open, it dies. That's why Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but it's Christ that lives within me. And the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So this glory, well, I don't feel the glory. I don't, I don't see the glory. I don't experience the glory. Wait, you got Christ. You've got the glory. You've got the glory of God in these earthen vessels that the excellency of the glory may be a God and not of us. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. Now, now, now I, I really, remember Jesus said to his disciples, whom do you say that I am? That was before they were born again. And Peter spoke up and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's why he said, he said, blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And upon this rock, this foundation, this revelation, what is revelation? Revelation is faith. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, faith is simply the revelation of you being able to see what God sees. That's what faith is. Faith is in God. It's you seeing what God sees to where it literally penetrates every part of your being. So when the Israelites, were, which were the covenant descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they had come out of Egypt, but when the descend, when the, when, when, when the, and they were Jewish people, and they were a part of the covenant, and they, they had the law given to them, all the promises were given to them, but when Goliath came out, they all ran for their life. When David saw Goliath, he didn't see a giant. He saw an uncircumcised or a man who did, had no covenant with God. What David saw, now which one was reality? I mean, was Goliath a giant? Was he a killer of man? Was he a mighty warrior? Yeah, in the flesh. But in the spirit, it was nothing. And you can see this in David. David is not trying to hype him up. I believe, I believe, I believe. He's not trying. He has a revelation. David got a revelation. And remember, the glory of God wasn't even in him yet. We got the glory of God in us. We got Christ Jesus in us. And David, he, and that's why he says that the, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven now is greater than any prophet or any man of God that lived in the old covenant. And that's why in Hebrews 11, it tells us miracle after miracle of 50 events of many old covenant. And then he says, now consider Jesus. For in other words, what those guys did does not compare to what we can do in Christ Jesus. Well, Pastor Mike, if we can, if we can, if we can, 
If we can manifest God's glory, yes, it says, mighty signs and wonders were done by the hands of the disciples. Many signs and wonders. What do you mean, signs and wonders? Manifestations of God's glory. Revealing God's glory. Revealing God's glory. How? By a spirit of revelation. What's that? Faith. What God says becomes more real to you than the physical world around you. I, I had literally somebody the other day, it's kind of funny because I laughed at it, this person kind of said to me about basically implying, well, <laughs> what are you going to do if your money dries up? I said, well, I said it won't dry up because God's my source. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about the natural. Oh, if the natural dries up, well, that's no problem for God. He created the natural. So David sees Goliath and says, huh. And when he goes out to face Goliath, he runs. He says, today, today God will deliver you. Not me, I'm, gonna, I'm a big man, I'm a somebody. No, he's a nobody. He said, but I know somebody. See, I'm a nobody. And, and, and you better hurry up and realize you are too. But we know somebody. <laughs> Yes, I'm a nobody. I've always told people, I never told you I was your answer. I'd be lying. I'm not your answer. If anything, I could be a problem. <laughs> but I know someone who is the answer. His name is Jesus. So the glory that Jesus was is now in us. The glory. All flesh will see it, but they can't perceive it. But because we receive him, now we believe to be made or manifested as the sons of God. How do we know that we're the sons of God? We manifest it. How? By a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge and the understanding of him. The eyes of our understanding have been enlightened. The eyes, see your understanding has an eye. I know this don't make sense to you. Uh, you got physical eyes, but your understanding has an eye. And I have seen the light. I seen the light. I seen the light. I seen. Now, remember I was was blind, but now I see. Now I see. What do you see? I see. <gasps> By his stripes I'm healed. <gasps> I see. My God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory. I see. That no weapon formed against me will prosper. I see. If God be for me, who can be against me? I see. If I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I see. Whatever I bind will be bound and whatever I loose will be loose. I see. I see. I see. You know what that is? That's faith in operation. Stop agreeing with the unbelief. It's a spirit that tries to overload your mind and your emotions. You don't live by your mind. You're transformed by the renewing of your mind, but you agree with God. That's what faith does. I agree with God. Well, what if I don't agree with God? It means you don't see it as God sees it, and you need to see it as God sees it, which is a gift, is the spirit of wisdom and revelation, which is faith. So what, how do you do it? By the word. The word. The word takes you in. You know why Jesus said, when I come back, will there be any faith left in the earth? I think he was saying this. When I come back, will my word be in the heart of my people? The word is the glory of God that we drink in. Like the rain coming down from heaven. You drink it in. You drink it in. You drink it in. Have you ever seen someone reading a, a novel, whether it be Christian or, or worldly, and you can't get their attention? They're drinking in the words of what they're reading. We drink in the truth. You shall know the truth. 
and the truth will woo, make you free. Pastor, I, I, it's so hard for me to get the word in my heart. Yes, you know why? Every demonic power of hell knows that this is the doorway into the manifested glory of God. So I'm meditating on word as right before I go to sleep. All of a sudden, in this dream, I was in this massive room filled with believers. Believers, as far as the eye could see. Now, they were systematically sitting. It was like over here, they were uh, sitting. They're all like kind of looking towards the center of the room. It was a big room. But they were like in different groups. It was kind of really strange. Really nice place. I didn't notice the ceiling, but I noticed all these people. And I knew something was happening, something was going to happen, and things had been happening. And, and these little groups, and as I'm standing, I don't know if I'm standing, or I don't know where I'm at. I just see this massive, and I see these, I know they're believers. I know they're spirit-filled believers, massive groups. And I, and, and, I, and I heard the Lord say to me in this dream, manifestations. I said, what? And I heard him say, manifestations. And all of a sudden, this crowd over here began to cheer and shout. And here was like the Shekinah glory over the top of them. A visible expression like smoke over them. And then over here, another group is shouting and is the glory of God like rain. It's raining on them. I'm telling you, this was strange. Over this section, like another, like it was like a diamond-shaped group. I said it, whoosh, gold dust just began to pour out of them like showers of blessing. Gold dust. And then oil. And then healings. And miracles. And this thing is happening all over the place. And it's like this whole, this never-ending room of believers was filled with lightning and, and electric. Have you ever felt electricity in the air? It's just electrifying. And in this dream, I said, Lord, because I'm hearing them just like in my heart saying, manifestations, manifestations. I said, Lord, what is that? He said, this is what I'm about to do in the church again. He said, oh, I'm about to manifest myself. And I knew why, because the Bible, Jesus said this, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. He said, I'm about to manifest myself again. Now, you would think, because I know manifestations, because the Bible says, he therefore that worketh miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? For in other words, we know these manifestations are done by faith. Now, we've seen those manifestations here. Every one I just mentioned, we have experienced here. I mean, we give somebody a little bit, we put a little bit of oil, and at times we didn't even anoint people with oil, and the oil just began to flow. I mean, I am not lying. I've had oil flowing from my forehead, from my tear ducts, and from my hands at times without me saying a word. And it wasn't sweat, because I've been preaching for 40-some years, and I have sweated at times when I was preaching, but man, all of a sudden, there's been many times when I put my hand up there, and it is oil, and I can smell the fragrance of it. I didn't talk about it. Manifestations. How, how, did, how did the early church win so many people to the Lord? By manifestations. From the glory of God. How? How? Now, God does things at times, it seems to me, sovereignly. What I mean by that is this. God just, like, supposedly, when the, and, and the laughter movement's been around for go way, way, way back in great times of great reformation, there was weeping, there was laughing, there was shouting, there was people drunk in the Holy Ghost. I mean, this thing is not just... 
you know, the laughter movement and people getting drunk in the spirit was not just from Rodney Howard Brown's meetings. This goes way, way back. Where the joy overwhelms you. How many have ever had the joy of God overwhelm you where you could have, you, you said, oh, Lord, I can't handle anymore. Manifestations, I'm telling you prophetically right now. He said, surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret to his servants, the prophets. I'm telling you, we are coming, I believe, our last election. I really do. I believe it was a divine, sovereign move of God in this nation, not because a man is the answer, but to stop the tide of darkness, to turn it around for the reaping of a harvest. A magnificent harvest of souls. God's going to do this. God's going to do this. I was talking to a man the other day. I've talked to other people too. This guy really has nothing spirituality about him. He said when he found out what happened in the elections, he started dancing and he got tears of joy. It wasn't the man who won. It was the fact that darkness, God had raised up a wall against the darkness from overtaking our nation. A darkness of immorality and perversion as we have never seen. I'm just talking about the manifestations of the flesh are these. What's the manifestations of God? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, uh, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Uh, I know the world can dance. I used to be in the world. But how do you know that believers can dance? I've seen the glory of God. I remember one time we were having a move of God here, and I still remember to this day, uh, uh, trying to think of his name, he he, he, his daughter used to live with us. Jerry. Jer Power of God hits Jerry, just a little guy like me, and he rolled forward. His head, he rolled forward, and he rolled again. Were you here for that, Lord? I don't know. He rolled. He ro I watched him roll like a ball, rolling forward. Now, you just try to do that two or three times. And he was always probably in his late 40s, early 50s. He rolled all the way around this church and came right back up to the front. That's weird stuff. But when the glory of God gets manifested, signs and wonders. I remember we had Joe Jordan here once, but he was over here uh, uh, at a college, and he was ministering at that college, and my wife were in the crowd, and people were getting drunk in the spirit, and this, this big guy... He, he laid his hands on him, and the guy, the guy had put his hand, there was like a, ch a church pew up front. Uh, what's the name of that Christian college up there towards Carlisle? After you go past, after you go past Mechanicsburg, no, Mechanicsburg. Messiah College, that's where it was at. He was at a meeting there for full gospel businessmen, and this big guy, he, put, he got drunk in his spirit. He got, I mean, he's plastered like three sheets to the wind. I don't know what that means, but he's gone. His nose turned beet red like a drunk would. People say, that can't be God. Listen, that, what's amazing, though, he's stumbling around. He gets up against the wall, and his hand got stuck to the wall. It was stuck. Know what do you mean stuck? He, I, two guys went over his hand. Invisibly stuck, two guys went over and they grabbed his arm and with all their might they could not get his hand. And then his hand got stuck on, on the pew. Everywhere he put his hand, he'd get stuck. Why would God do that? I don't know. I think it is just for he can confound those who think they're smart. He confounds the wise. He uses the foolish to confound the wise. The glory of God is about to be manifested. I mean, we've seen it through years, God filling people's fillings with gold. 
Why would God fill them with gold? Why not just with a man, with regular uh, tooth material? Well, think about it. If you went and looked, at, if somebody said, yeah, God filled all my fillings, and you looked in their mouth, and all you saw was just regular teeth, you'd go, oh, yeah, right. Ah, uh, yeah, you got a nice set of teeth. But what if you told them that all of your fillings were told to turn to gold? Yeah, right. And they look, and your mouth is, is shimmering like a gold necklace around somebody's throat. You go, what? I remember the pr Pritz, that Bill Pritt, he was watching all this stuff happening on a back row. Oils flowing, fragrances filling the air, gold teeth being, you know, things happening. He's back there kind of mocking it, and he, he, he just walked away, and he was out driving his 18-wheeler one day, and it was kind of cold out. He walked into a, a, a like a 7-Eleven, he said, and he ought to get this on it. We need to get this on a video where he can explain it. He said all of a sudden, he said the woman said behind the counter, what's happening? What's hap what's, I, you're sweating profusely, and it's cold in here. He reached up, and his head was covered with oil. He said, what? He said he went into the restroom and it began to pour down from his head. He started weeping, fragrant oil weeping, coming out of his scalp, down his head, face. He said he went out to his big 18-wheel truck. He started wiping the oil out of his eyes. He had to use a paper towel, oil running down. He said he was weeping and crying and wailing. How many know that touched his heart? God wants to touch our hearts. God wants to manifest his glory. See, listen, the problem is too many believers are seeking manifestations when all you got to do is seek God. So he got home, he didn't tell his wife. Didn't tell, he didn't say nothing, man. It was like, you know, he goes to sleep. He gets up in the morning. He's standing in front of the mirror and he says, I, I wonder if God did something. I wonder if God filled my teeth with gold. He said he opened up his mouth and pulled back his lip and all of their fillings in his mouth was gold. Now that's a manifestation of God. God is real. So then, listen, he said he called his family in there and he finally told them what happened. He looked in William's mouth. All the fillings were gold. He looked in Pam's mouth. All the fillings were gold. He said, we're going to the dentist. She said, we're going to go get our teeth. Our regular dentist, we're going to get our teeth cleaned. So they make an appointment. Pam said she went down, sat down in her chair. The dentist got in her mouth. And right away he said, where in the world did you get these gold fillings? She said, what? She, he said, I've been your dentist all these years. Where would you get your gold fillings? She said to him, at church. <laughs> He said, what? At church. I went to church and pastor prayed that God would turn my fillings into gold. And they've got him in their mouth today. That's how uh, their truck drivers too, uh, Bob, and, uh, uh, Bob and Karen uh, Hill, they're probably watching us right now because one drives and the other one holds the, the iPad or the iPhone or the Android to watch us while we're preaching Sunday mornings when they're not here with us. So uh, Bob, we prayed for him, and God manifested his glory, filled his teeth with gold, and he uses as a witnessing tool. He goes around, sticks his finger in his mouth, pulls it back and says, you see that, you see that? And he begins to preach Jesus Christ because of the manifestation of gold in his mouth. Well, now you stop and think this. God can manifest himself any way he wants. But here's the key. And this is why we don't have much manifestation right now. Jesus said, when I come back, will there be any faith left? We, we, a lot of the church today, the church world, the majority of the church world, they don't believe in miracles. They don't believe in healings. They don't believe in the supernatural. Why? Because if they did... They'd be preaching it. They'd be telling people about it. They'd be testifying. Let me tell you what God did for me. Oh, you know, I, I once was uh, uh, tongue-tied. He opened up my mouth, and I haven't shut up since. Uh, I once couldn't hardly hear anything. Uh, my wife says I still got selective hearing. But he opened up my ears. I once was in oxygen tents all the time. God healed my lungs. 
I once had a broken ankle. And the congregation saw it, a broken ankle. And I heard the Lord say to me, you're healed. And when I went to stand up, about passed out. But faith, faith, faith is a revelation. God, the devil's a liar, I'm healed. Nobody told me to do it, and I slammed my foot down as hard as I could. And I blacked out, fell down. My wife saw it. The third time I passed out, she walked out of the room. She said, I can't watch you do this anymore. The fourth time I slammed my foot down as hard as I could in the name of Jesus, and I fell down. The fifth time I got up, slammed my foot down. The fifth time, slammed my foot down as hard as I could. I did not feel any pain, and I looked down, and my foot was normal. Now, I mean this big, black, and blue, swollen foot that my staff, I used to have 21 people on my staff in the congregation scene. And when I put it up on Facebook, people used to come to church here years ago, like, like Brenda, uh, uh, Brenda Lewis acknowledges it. Yes, Pastor, we saw your broken foot. It was big, black, and blue, and swollen. You went home, and you came back, and your foot was normal. How did I, how, how do you get into that realm of God's, Manifested glory by the word. You hide the word in your heart. What word? Not any word. The, the truth of the Bible. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Many of you You've been healed. How many have ever been supernaturally healed by God? Let me see your hands. Supernaturally healed. Because he's a good God. I tell you, this world needs to see God's glory. And you are a glory worker. What do I mean by that? You make the glory work. How? By trusting God. By trusting God. Y'all heard of Todd White. Now, Todd White used to come here and preach here. Todd is very famous now. And Todd, he was just really whacked out on drugs and goofed up like I was at one time. And, and uh, he still, he wears dreadnoughts to this day. And Todd got delivered. He got saved. And he read the scripture where it says, lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yeah. So he decided this, he decided every sick person I see, I'm going to start praying for him. You can watch him on the internet. Now, he's everywhere. He said, he, he Went and laid his hands on a person, nothing happened. Prayed for another. He just walked up and buried. It got so bad his daughter and his wife wouldn't go with him nowhere. Nothing ever happened. He just laid his hands on some people and say, in the name of Jesus, I command you to be healed. And it didn't look like nothing happened. And, and, and about three months this went on. Three months, can you imagine that? And uh, so one day, finally, he walked into like a low store and there was a woman in, in, in a wheelchair or something. And he had it for him right Right then, uh, and, and they actually tried to get him the promise. Now, Dad, will you promise not to pray for anybody when we go out today? But, but he, you know, so one day, and you can watch his testimony. One day, he walked in a Lowe's or somewhere, and there was a woman in a wheelchair or something, all crippled up. And he walked over, and right away, the daughter and the mother thought, we're getting away from him. You know, <laughs> you know he's going to make a fool of himself. He prayed for her. God healed her on the spot. She jumped right up. From then on, he began to just have miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. You know why? It wasn't Todd. It was faith in Christ. Faith in Jesus. You don't seek God's glory. It just comes. How? By giving yourself to the word. You talk it. You walk it. You sing it. You speak it to yourself. And it just begins to come. Now, the truth of the matter is... That it says, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness and graft the word which is able to save your souls. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. What is that? Filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. Anything you know that's against the will of God in your mind, in your heart. You lay it aside. And you give yourself to the word. Then it says, but be doers of the word. And then God's glory will come. When, when I first got born again, of course, we didn't have internet. Kathy and I, even after we got married back in 1978, we never had a TV in the house. 
never had the newspaper. We went by the newspaper. We're just in the Word and prayer, not maybe as intently in the Word as what we should have been, but we, we saw God. We saw, if you read our book, Living Around Miraculous, number one, and there's three of them now, I'm working on number four, we saw miracle after miracle after miracle. But the key was that we were hiding God's Word in our heart without the world. Now, wow, how to stay out of the world? The news... I'm not saying that we become hermits and lock ourselves away. I'm not saying we don't ignore what's going on. But I'm telling you, God is greater than what's going on. So one day I'm driving my sister's Maverick down from uh, Canada. And I'm just singing to the Lord. I'm singing. I'm, I'm, I'm a, a 19-year-old kid just been saved for three months. I'm a 19-year-old kid. Uh, is uh, In the afternoon, the sun was shining about right above my head. I'm driving a red 1973 Maverick. And I'm just talking to God, I'm talking to God, I'm talking to God. And God's presence just began to overwhelm me. I just went deeper into prayer. I began to cry. God's presence begins to overwhelm me. Without even thinking, the inside of my car began to be filled. And I had seen it one time before at Avenue Christian Fellowship up in Alaska. Sparkly, blue, red, white fog began to fill my car got thicker thicker my hands came off the steering wheel now I'm really crying I'm lost now I'm I mean I don't even know where I'm at I'm so I'm so gone in the spirit and the car was so full of the fog that's God's manifested presence I could not see out the front ship I didn't have any fear I'm in another realm I'm in another place I'm in the spirit how long? It felt like I was only there for a matter of minutes. My hands came back down, came on the steering wheel. I'm thanking Jesus, loving Jesus, praising Jesus, and the fog dissipates. And here, the sun had set. And I had to turn on my headlights. Somebody drove my car for hours on end. Now liars go to hell. I'm not lying to you. God's glory came. I'm telling you in this dream I just had Monday, God said, get ready. My glory's coming again. He said it won't just be laughter, it won't just be joy, it won't just be gold, it won't just be oil, it just won't be my heavenly mist. He said it will be all of it flooding, combining, and coming like a mighty river. <laughs> <laughs> like a mighty river, Tiny. We're getting ready. See, a harvest has got to come on. Multitudes of young men and women lost, confused, don't know what their life's all about. God's about to rescue them. He ain't going to rescue them by dry preaching, proper homiletics, and knowing uh, the eschatology, what's right. No, it's going to come by the Spirit of God like a mighty wind on the day of Pentecost. The sound of a mighty wind and fire sat upon the heads of each of them. That fire is the manifestation of God. A good friend of ours who will be here in March, Joan Pierce will be with us in March, by the way. She said she was preaching in a church up in New York. Presence of God came, power of God came. Next thing you know, they heard sirens. Sirens. They pulled up outside of the church. Here comes the firemen running inside. They're yelling, get out the fire. Church is on fire, but everybody's drunk in the spirit, so they, they didn't leave. And, but they got outside, and there was a flame of fire engulfed the roof of the church, but it was the glory of God. And they had revival, they said. I mean, no, there'll be revival. Fire department shows up. We serve a living God. We don't have religion. We, we don't have letter. We have truth and spirit. You want to bring up the screen, baby? So let's pray. Father, we thank you for your glory. We thank you for the day and age we live in. We thank you that you're about to manifest yourself in ways that we have never seen, heard, thought, or imagined. And Lord, you're, you're not going to do these things to 
entertain us to get our attention you're going to do you're going to do these manifestations to get the attention of the world father hollywood ain't got nothing on your church lord the special effects of this age has nothing on what you can do lord even as you did powerful signs and wonders in egypt to take people out of slavery you're going to do powerful signs and wonders in these days to bring people out of slavery in Jesus name uh, lately when I've been praying for people who don't know Christ this is what I ask I say father give them dreams and give them visions visit them supernaturally touch up you know the, he says ask and you shall receive start asking God to touch your loved ones supernaturally so Lord get them say Jesus get them get them so if you if you like to you, and you're you're a carrier of that glory as a believer in Christ because you trust in Christ you're you're to carry that glory like like a candle with the flame on the end amen so if you just I, I just what's in my heart right now just really want to be thrust in. I know there's hardly anybody here this morning but I'm glad you came if you want to just be thrust into that glory be used to be a, a carrier of that glory I'm gonna lay hands on you I want to anoint you this morning so come up here if you if you just I mean really if you if you're just saying father I want to I, I want to carry that glory come down 